All right, so this is the first machine that I bought him. You bought me. <laughs> I bought for you. <laughs> it's paid for itself. It's been a mighty little thing. The first machine I learnt to drive. Oh, it really, like all my machines, it really needs some money spending on it. But it's been a mighty little digger. It definitely paid for itself the first time it did any work up here. Repair on the very first dam. Yes, which has made it not full yet, but at least it's got more water in it. Because yep. it went... We cleared a lot of lantana with it. Down the flat, around the front paddock, well and truly. Yep. We all got to learn to drive it, the that's boys all, and I. That's also part of them paying for themselves, even the dozer. The boys aren't... Unfortunately, they're more like me than their mother and are not super academic, so... They need some life skills that can earn them something wherever they may be. And driving machines is a great life skill. It's how that's we met. I've, that's what I've looked at it. It's how we met. Yep, I was a machine operator when Cal was a teacher. Down near Gundawindi. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a great little machine, the digger. Hey, and it was a fantastic birthday and Christmas present. Yep. It's just got to do a little bit more up here and then it needs to come home and do a heap of work at home. Yeah, it's got uh, a leaking fuel pump. Uh, How did you do that? Just happened. <laughs> happens. It happens. Old age and it's had no maintenance on it before we bought it. And then I spent money on it mate, trying to get it up to some level of maintenance. When I bought it, um, put new filters and new oils and everything through it and a few new hoses. The more I spend on it, the more it would bloody break down and cost me money. Well, the other big problem is, isn't all of the equipment also in Japanese, which made it really hard yeah. to figure out what was actually happening and there's no pictures? It's like a black market Komatsu. <laughs> it came over on a ship out of Japan or somewhere. So I don't know, they can pull them down and squeeze three or four of these into a container. And once they've done so many hours over there, I think the emissions standards, they have to put new engines in them or get a new one. I remember when we first got it, I thought, wow, this is a really big machine. And now when you have it parked up, and I'll turn around. <laughs> Oh, guess who that is? Sydney! Next to the bulldozer. Come here. Leave them always alone. It's really not that big. Well. So we're... <laughs> I'll come out of the sun. Look. Where is Rob's the same height as the body of the machine? I'll turn this way so you're not looking into the sun. It's a little tiny digger. It's a seven and a half ton Komatsu digger. So it's not, it's not a one ton digger or anything. It's capable of doing it's... a lot of work slowly. <laughs> well, a lot of work slowly means that the boys can get on it or yeah. I can get on it. And it doesn't matter for what we paid for it. It doesn't really matter if the boys do something stupid and something gets damaged on it we can sort of afford to replace it well it's paid for itself so anything extra it does is a bonus it's not something you just want to go oh well it's paid for itself it can rot in the paddock it's got so many uses yet oh it, there's still plenty that it needs to do it needs to uh we've got oh, is we it this building. one that's got the auger bit yeah, yeah. for it so there's our caravan that is slowly rotting from weather and it needs to have some holes drilled and the sawmill used to put posts in for a roof over and just this gorgeous old tree right here is an Australian native fig tree and it's just glorious but it's just at the wrong angle so we don't get the shade from it when we need it 
and because that way's east so we cop the full morning sun which gets really hot in the middle of summer when you're cooking either a barbecue or on the fire which is pretty much how we cook up here is um that so you can see our dodgy fence of gates around it so just to keep the cows out well, cows want to come and the, have yeah, the cows come bacon and, and eggs for breakfast as well that's it so yeah it's quite funny having the does are parked up there Makes and the this tiny little dozer <laughs> <laughs> next to it but it's it's yeah has so much to do we've got yards to build sheds to build that's here and then at home yeah, we've got lots to do at home big sheds to build at home and access to the river at home so much to do so much to do I've, I've, but, yeah. we'll get there yep we'll get there one bite at a time that's right the elephant just gonna eat an elephant one bite at a time Cal's very slow, very deliberate, handy work on the little thing. We've been here for about nearly two hours probably. Poking around, knocking the antenna out. First time ever on a machine. She's doing all right. <laughs> Very happy with yourself. Eric was here yesterday trying to get him to do the same thing. We popped the track off and come out. that I paid $10,000 for. Ah, I see something else that I've done. A big knuckle up there. Without a whack. It'll be affecting how much he reaches. Folks, that's it from Mountain Block Moments. We shall see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe. What she said.